Let's go in to Pix Advance for game number one. Spenu Sonic Boom versus Longju I am. I am Incredible Miracle. So, Longju Incredible Miracle, long name. Rom will be the first ban in this game, and we've seen it jump. We were talking about it a little bit earlier to sort of first pick priority on red side, then first pick blue side, then banned on the blue side if you don't want to first pick it. And close to the first ban, of course, on that red side. How will Samsung respond? Fizz, you'd imagine they're, they're going to want to try to set up Soul with a, a Maokai pick here just to make him comfortable, and I, I've got a feeling that's what we're going towards is a Maokai first pick from uh, Spenu here. Well, also because Lilac has not really shown a lot of proficiency on champions that are not called Maokai, so first yeah. picking it and then taking away any possible counter pick might be a very valid strategy. I think it's a good plan for Spenu in this game. Yeah. So it doesn't I'm really matter what you get for catch. It's probably not going to do very well in it anyway. So True. might as well set Soul up with a chance to uh, at least be useful in teamfights. And deny deny Lilac the pick. So we'll be yeah. Thresh, two support bands, and that just goes to show how important Ignar is to this LZIM team. Definitely a bright spot. His rookie season has been a solid one in spite of his team struggles. The final ban from IM will be the Maokai, perhaps? Uh, I don't know if you do that. I think you just ban, you ban a pocket pick, and then you try and take something. So Ezreal? They, yeah, you could ban the Ezreal. It will be the Alistair instead, so really Oh. Limiting. So basically, I think IM is going to try and first round draft Annie with all these support bans and the fact that Secret, again, has fallen into the primary engage role on his team. Now, they could take the Azir away from Frozen, but that would leave a probable Maokai Annie draft for IM. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, the Azir is a good takeaway from Frozen, but still, I, I feel like you want to shore up your weaknesses. You know, Sasan can play a lot of different champions, and that Ezreal is still available. The Braum has been banned. Give him the Azir, put Soul on Maokai, give him something that he can be useful on. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I wonder where this Fizz ban is coming from. Uh, from Spenu's side. Solo queue, perhaps. Scrims, perhaps. I mean, if you're not going to play the Maokai, you might as well learn the counter. Well, first pick Leona would be pretty shocking, but they're really forcing Ignar to go deep in the support pool if they do this. But Ignar plays a good Annie, so it will be okay. Victor, actually. So again, a lot of Victor blue side priority tonight. We did see it in our last game. There's a Maokai, of course. It will be Sivir instead. So actually, they are not going to be prioritizing that Annie quite yet, in spite of the fact that Ignar has been good on that champion. He must feel like he's going to be comfortable on something like Janna. He could play Nautilus as well, too. He's played some of that this season. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting to see. Uh, some of the Nautilus nerfs have caused Nautilus to fall off just a little bit. It's not as common, but we're going to go pretty deep in the yeah. support picks this game. All right, well, there's a Rek'Sai for catch. And the Annie as well. All right. And so Spenu leaving IM with some difficult decisions here. Frozen was a big Syndra player back in the day. Syndra Lux. Yeah. If you go way back. It's true, but I don't know if he wants to actually pull that out in this kind of a game. There's not really a whole lot on the line here between these two teams. Both have no. been mathematically eliminated from the playoffs at this stage. Probably headed for relegation as well, too. So it's kind of a kind of a match for pride, really, at this point. And you could definitely take that mid Ezreal if you wanted to. It's and they're going they're going to okay. So they will have a bit of a tough matchup early with this Victor able to really bully the Ezreal, especially over the minion wave. Now they could take Olaf. the Olaf jungle for Spooky. All right, well, Spooky flexing his champion pool muscles a little bit. We'll He's got a big well smile on his face after they locked that one in. Yeah. It's been played only by Bengi in Korea. Obviously, we've seen a lot of uh, Olaf picks or bans against Fnatic in the West and some other Olaf play. And, but there's not really going to be a good way to stop him here from getting onto the back line. Playing Vayne against this Olaf might be a little <laughs> bit problematic. Yeah, I'd be a little bit worried. You know, Kogma, there's not a lot of appeal for this Kogma. I guess if you go for the Kale, you have the ultimate at least, but would this be a top Kale perhaps? I guess it would be, huh? I mean, I, I doubt it's going to be Kale. So the vein, they have to figure out some way to peel. Could be perhaps a Gnar 
uh, selected in the end. Corky would be the better choice, something with yeah. a little bit more escapability. So you don't have to deal with that. Shen. And the Shen, okay. So they look for some extra protection for their back line with the Shen ultimate. They already have the engage, good to go with the Annie. So Shen ults onto the backside. Tank Wars in the top lane. So what do you think? Janna or Nautilus here? Support Teemo is a thing, but it's a stupid thing. <laughs> it's a solo queue thing, that's yes. for sure. Yes, it is. And uh, yeah, I think Leona is reasonable. I mean, locking people down for a nice two shot barrage, that's going to be a lot of, yep. lot of damage. And, and Victor has a problem getting away from that solar flare. Yep. But huh. who's really going to be coming in that you want to push away with the ultimate, though? I guess Rek'Sai and Shen, but still. I think I the like Leona, Leona better, yeah. I think Leona's better okay. back here. I agree with you, Doha. I don't think you're that worried about the backline threat from Spenu. Yeah. Uh, I think that if you can avoid the Annie stun, you're going to be in good shape. And you have a spell shield and an arcane shift to get out of that situation. So as long as Frozen and Roar can play that properly, then it's much more important that they are able to double down on the engage, try and shut down the victor. They're making it. I am is making it very, very hard for Spenu players to get away from this Olaf and Maokai. They're not going to be able to escape these guys if uh, the if the Olaf Axis hit, you know, if Leona hits them with the Solar Flare. And that's going to let Ezreal and Sivir do a lot of very easy free damage. Yes, it will. And a lot of it comes down to how is the early game going to go? Because Victor and Rek'Sai are going to have a big advantage against Olaf and Ezreal when it comes to 2v2s in the mid lane at the inception of this game while Frozen is still trying to build for some damage. And True. Sasin can punish Frozen if he can get that mid tower down very quickly. So we've seen Victor, uh, played by very exceptional mid laners at this league, take these low wave clear mid laners and really just destroy them early to a point that they can never have a huge effect in the game. It's an interesting situation because these teams are so similar. Both kind of failed teams, not doing too well. Both with strong mid laners, very weak top and jungle with like okay bottom lanes. There's a lot of similarities and we will see who takes the first game of the best of three. Time to find out. All right, well, welcome to Summoner's Rift for what is sure to be one of the most exciting matches you have ever seen. Wow, incredible miracle getting a pretty incredible cheer at the beginning of this one, and Spenu trying to still search for that first match victory. Will they get it? It's going to be a long, long season if they go 0-18, but they have nowhere to go but up if that True. is going to be the case. That's right. Can't really get much worse than that. In fact, it can't at all. <laughs> They could have gotten 0 and 18 without winning any games, Doha. That is true, but and they are winning more games in the second round, Robin. So a lot more, yeah, a lot more. I mean, what, when they came into their match against Anarchy in their last best of three, they came into it with a, a better win-loss record in their last few matches than Anarchy had. Yep, and they absolutely did. So they they have been generally trending upward. Uh, I am going for kind of their B team in the top and jungle this game, I guess they must be mighty confident about their abilities to take out Spenu's Sonic Boom today. And the... It's like Spooky's parents. That's right. Parents of Spooky. Second professional game. Yep. And on that Olaf, too, so a unique pick. Not quite the, uh, the Tom Udir, but uh, still, not bad. You know, that's, that's Udir's first name is Tom. His name is, if you're going to send him mail, you have to address it to Tom Udir. <laughs> Tom, not only for Tom Kench, apparently. That's right. Tom Udir, too. Hello, my name is Thomas Udir. May I smack you with a bear paw? No? All right. He's a very refined voice. He sounds a lot more angry in game. That's true. That's just because you're hitting him at a bad time, you know? He doesn't like to be something. Who does? Ignar, trying to harass a little bit. Decent amount of damage on the soul. Ooh, he oh, actually takes one, one of the, nice. uh, yeah, takes one of the small minions. That is very nice and very annoying if you are Spenu, and apparently they're going to keep doing this. Wow, this seems like a very deep way for uh, Ignar to go. Can't they just turn on him? Yes, of course they can. Uh, they could definitely just go to the bottom side of the jungle and ignore Ignar right now. And apparently they're going to take the hard way when it comes to jungling and take a little bit more damage and a bit more risk. 
in response. Sassen already doing the early zoning here onto the Ezreal. Ezreal actually used Smite early on the Raptor buff to get that. Okay. Nice little gank there, actually, by Ignar in the mid lane, helping yeah. Frozen with a little bit of sustain, too, with that runic bulwark. Well, Ignar's really tanky, and I mean, we haven't seen this in a while, but Leona is really one of those champions where you can roam very, very heavily in the early stages of the game and make a, a big problem for the other team. Well, so is Annie, so we'll see if Secret has True. anything in store as Ignar just camps the mid lane right now. and. I think that's what you need to do if you want to keep the wave clear from being a major issue. Oh, a nice sign Frozen. for Frozen. Do you want to build a snowman? I don't think he does. He's okay. playing Victor. Okay, bye. <laughs> Victor definitely does not want to build a snowman. He wants to build cyborg people. That's, cool. that's way cooler than building a snowman. Wow. <laughs> Never mind. I'm with Victor on this one. Really? You want yeah. to be part of the glorious evolution? Sure, why not? All right, well, <laughs> get on the operating table, Lindoa. I'll do it. If you could get like a like an extra powerful robotic something, what would you get? <laughs> uh, Keep in mind, this is a PG-13 <laughs> rated broadcast. Uh oh, well, I'm not allowed to say what I really want, then, Doa. I mean. I don't know what you need, but uh, <laughs> as far as as far as me, I would I would go for robot legs. Yeah, legs are cool. You could yeah. at least jump really high. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't have to wait for like elevators and stuff. You could just jump up to the top of the building. You could run really fast. You wouldn't need to take public transportation anymore. You could have people pay you to carry them. That'd be great. Robot legs would be awesome. Oh, well, gank in the mid lane. Sauce in a little bit of trouble. There's a flash dump from Leona, and he's in big trouble. One more auto will do, and there's first blood. Going to Frozen, Cat shows up a little bit too late. Meanwhile, Spenu strikes back with a kill in the bot lane. That one goes to Secret. Lilac just died in a 1v2 lane swap. Oh, yeah, Lilac <laughs> died too. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> so, uh, uh, nice gank on the mid lane there from Incredible Miracle. They were able to pull it out, and Ignar's camping really paying off. Had that flash and the ignite up to secure the kill, and not really a whole lot Sasan could do. He had to burn the cleanse earlier on. That's pretty big, too, to get those summoners out of Sasan. Yeah, and to get a kill this early onto yeah. a Runeglaive Ezreal. Well, that's going to fix your laning phase up nicely. Already has a sheen in five minutes. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I am really came into this one knowing what they needed to do. They knew they needed to camp the mid lane. They knew they needed to do something to let Frozen sort of compensate for that lack of wave clear, you know? Yeah, I, I wonder what happened in that bottom side. I don't know. I don't know how a Maokai dies so mm -hmm. early on. I think you just get Tibber stunned and, and you get killed, I guess. But, I mean, Ignite was used too, which is probably what picked Secret up to kill in the end. But Yeah, two flashes. So they, <clears throat> they did commit a lot for that gank, but certainly worth it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, anything to get Soul ahead as well, too. As Soul face checks a, a brush. And He's shed. He's okay. Oh, okay. He actually won that drink. <laughs> he did, yeah. <laughs> Roar just not in range to help out Ignar. Makes me want to try a support Shen out, you know? I can face check all I want. I've been spending way too much time with St. Vicious lately, haven't I? <laughs> I guess, and watching NALCS. <laughs> it looks fun, though. I mean, Shen support, not anything else yet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm enjoying. I enjoy Shen support a lot. <laughs> well but really, NASL, uh, it's okay. <laughs> Shen support is better. Nice save, Jella. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Worlds, here I come. <laughs> so, okay. Well, Spooky, just getting some wards down right now. Not really able to, well, maybe he can make a move onto the dragon with the Corky no longer there. But a healthy amount of wards for Spenu around that river, so they know exactly what's going on with this Olaf. Not going to be trending in that direction. I feel like what's going on with Olaf would be an awesome sitcom. Well, a lot of the you times know? he's just nerfed into oblivion and not <laughs> able to compete. So. He's just sitting at home being very depressed in his tiny apartment. Yep. Watching TV. Yeah, can't even afford 
all the all the skis he used to enjoy. Well, how is he? He can't even get the gold on Summoner's Rift. Exactly. He's run through his stash now. He just uh, drinks tap water. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Olaf. Oh, is it time for a blue steel? It was time for an attempt. It didn't quite work out, though. And Sasasin walking over there, thought he may have been a little bit higher in HP and required more damage from Sasin, but not going to be the case. Pretty late true shot barrage there. I'm likely to pick it up. And now Nuclear is here. He's got his sheen, his level six, so he's going to be happy to be in lane up against this Sivir. Oh, yeah. And Roar is going to need to be pretty careful with this spell shield, those stuns coming in from Secret. Otherwise, he will take a lot of poke. Where is this going? It's like Frozen just dedicated to clearing out some wards right now. Nice CS lead, actually, which is not something you see with an Ezreal versus a Victor very often. Well, he did get that really big early pressure from the support to help him in that laning phase. And now, yep. I mean, Spen is going to be paying for it. They don't have any tools to stop the damage. They don't have a Braum. They don't have a Yasuo. These true shot barrages from Frozen are going to hurt a lot if he lands them. Oh. So he actually took that with a red buff proc, looks like. I guess so. Which is good, because you never want to give that stuff to the mid laner. No, you don't. You yeah. need that extra gold. Which is not true. It's way better to get Frozen rolling right now, get him as much gold as possible, <laughs> because he is going to have a massive effect. Yeah, I suppose. On the late game. I guess. Well, he's got a good start anyway, of course. Early Sheen certainly helps with the damage. And, uh, you know, we usually see a lot of Ezreal's go for that early Ranger's Trailblazer, but where he got that first blood, you can just go for a little bit more damage. Ouch. Oh, close one. Ooh. Yeah, close one. Always annoying to be chunked out right as you're coming back into lane. Well, I like doing a lot better now that he's in the top side, but... I mean, he's catching up in terms of CS, but Sol here is able to take a lot of his punishment with the early cowl. Oh, yeah. Sol's in, Sol's in a very good place to lane indefinitely against this Maokai. Now, who's going to go for the first dragon here? Ward's coming down for Spenu. And will they try to pick this one up? Can't really do it right now. I am pinging frantically on that objective as Rek'Sai takes a nice little visit to the dragon pit. Spooky wants to see if he has some sort of angle, but he's not going to get it. You know, if people didn't know that one of the teams was called I Am, they would just think that we're talking about a lot of things we're doing. Yeah. You know, I am looking pretty good tonight. Yeah. Overall. That, <laughs> so far? Yeah. Definitely pulled out a nice advantage in this early game. Oh, I was talking about me, but yeah, Incredible Miracle's doing great too, man. See, Great. see what I did there? I I just warned you about this. <laughs> you walked right into it. I did. It's true. Oh, stun onto Roar. Almost walked right into that one. But thankfully, there's a spell shield. And Tibbers is used in vain. Wow. Well, that was an interesting trade of <laughs> ultimates there. I think you yeah. probably could have just gotten that with that spell shield out and the ult out with just a Q. I think I probably would have tossed a Q before I dropped Tibbers on him. Yeah. Spooky being a bit annoying. Oh, yep. Need more wards. So here we go. Victor's falling back. Catch actually can't really clear out these wards right now. Uh, as Victor not able to respond, Ruglave already complete for the Ezreal and Ignar trying to cut him off, but not going to have that opportunity. But they're starting to take over that lower jungle and get some good warding in onto Spenu's red buff. And this looks like an opportune time to start setting up for a dragon. Yeah, I think they should be able to claim it, too. Let's we'll see. I mean, Secret does not have Tibbers for a bit, so this would be the time to go for it if you're IM, and they are going to activate it. Yeah, we're going to start it. Just go after that with Ignar and Spooky, and they should be able to get that no problem. That shield of the Eclipse, Ignar just taking very little damage. Yep. Trade the aggro with uh, Olaf very, very easily. Oh, oh, whoops. Oops. Oh, oops. Oh, 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 it's it's so hard to watch. <laughs> oh. All right. Roy's like, all right, one auto. That's all I'm giving you guys. Oh, not even. <laughs> nope, just firing a true shot barrage over through the enemy jungle, making sure that they have eyes on what Spenu is up to. And so, first dragon of the game 
in IM's favor. They do have that slight gold lead too, but their scaling is pretty ridiculous in this game. And you gotta be very worried for Spenu at this stage. Sausen really yeah. going to come have to come out with a an impressive performance to turn around this situation because it's just gone completely sideways. You really need to be able to push up, play aggressively on the Ezreal, force him next to his turret to start chipping it out in the early game if you don't want the Runeglaive as to absolutely take over. It's a lot of pressure on Soul as well too because with his other teammates a little bit weakened here, they're really gonna need to have him have some good ults to have his teammates live long enough to compensate for that. Well, yeah. Absolutely. And even at the start of this game, you have to sort of wonder what the plan was from Spenu, because remember, they banned the Braum and first picked the victor. Yep. Uh, oops. Oh, that is extra bad. Yeah, I think Sasa thought he was going to get it with like the second explosion on the uh, death ray, but did not happen. So that's a blue buff going to catch, and that is exactly what you do not want to have happen against an Ezreal that's already got his rune wave, that's already pretty powerful. Look at that Sivir Ricochet, just sitting yeah. there spinning in the air. Huh, that's cool. When did they add that into the game? If you actually walk by it, you take damage. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> well, that'd be cool, though, you know, if you could, like, set down a non-moving object that does damage when you come into it. Then, like, create these little kind of obstacle courses for the enemy team. Mm -hmm. Not like there aren't champions that do that. Be neat if Sivir did it, though. <laughs> Doa, if you like that, I have a champion for you. His what? name is Teemo. What about, uh, but yeah, the mushrooms disappear right away, though. Oh, rip up taken by a catch. Maybe new gangplank with his barrels, which looks awesome, by the way. I can't wait for a new gangplank yeah. to hit competitive play because there's a lot of really cool theoretical plays you can make with the barrels, and the zone control is just so important. A lot of interesting options surrounding how you upgrade your ultimate, too. True. Oh, no. Uh. Oh, it was OK. That's how you get cut in half. I was going to say, that's really dangerous. Uh oh, this could be very dangerous for Spenu as well. But it won't be, So they're going to recall. Yep. And they are going to see Annie. So no problem. Just push it forward. Get some tower damage while you can. Or not. Just deny some no. CS and recall. Don't yeah. get that tower damage. Who needs tower damage? What do you need to do, win, win the game with towers? Huh. Yeah, you just get kills until they surrender. That's a doe away. <laughs> Winning games. You just crush their mentality so bad. You talk about objective control. I have one objective, to kill the other team. <laughs> when I achieve that objective, nothing else matters. Well, I wish you could be in the booth then, Doa. Me too. I've been in the booth. I've played League of Legends games in the booths here. Wow. Yeah, it's true. I've won games at those booths, Monte Cristo. <laughs> oh boy, Secret already starting to take some decent poke at 15 minutes from the Ez. That's right. It is a rough time for Spenu. Yeah, as are most times, unfortunately. I wonder if still that, there. I wonder if that's going to go away at any point. <laughs> Does it really need to? <laughs> uh, look out. No. Ooh. Got really close there. That was dangerous. Watch out, Ignar. Oh. No. oh uh. <laughs> that's how you get cut in half. Oh. oh. Catch is going to find Ignar. Uses that challenging smite right there. Spooky. Lying in wait. Tibbers comes down. Can they get a kill out of it? Shen came down as well, I believe. Ignar gets out. They took down Spooky. Here comes Sushat Braj. Doesn't really hit too many deep people, but a double kill for Roar here. What a, at the end of that, I am comes out with two kills, losing only Spooky. Yeah, and we saw the Rune Glaive as launched that True Shot Barrage from the mid lane, did actually chunk out nuclear on the back. Now, Soul will have that TP advantage for the next several minutes. So there's still an opportunity for Spenu to perhaps make a play here. Was a decent response, but Spooky set that up really nicely. And even though the Tibbers landed, I mean, the, the Olaf was already in Ragnarok, so he was able to keep fighting. And Ignar's Solar Flare was spot on in that team fight to get things rolling. Very true. So I am still coming out of that one on top. 
Very small gold lead, but we'll see if they can transition that into a dragon. Well, this has gone very poorly for Spenu. Basically, uh, now that they gave the two kills over to Roar, Corky not going to have that same kind of power spike. Roar coming back to lane with an Infinity Edge nice and early. Uh, we saw that the gank in the mid lane gave that first blood gold over to Frozen, so that's going to be very helpful for him. And the power spike that Victor had is kind of going to be denied here compared to the Runeglaive Ezreal in the late game. So it is a really hard game for Spenu to win because they have lost so many of their natural edges from their composition. Well, they prevented Ignar from going back. Aurora took a lot of damage as well. So this bottom turret might be in a little bit of danger. Spenu, though, actually, with chunking out the bot lane, could go for this dragon, too, and they'll get it. Yeah, that's an upside comeback. They have the Trinity Force, and they have the Sustain. Nuclear actually using his Bilgewater Cutlass onto Roar right there, so they buy some time. Not going to be enough, so I, I am is going to have to just give up this dragon and give it over to Spenu, so going to be a little bit more difficult. Again, Soul was able to TP there, too, so was unlikely that I am was going to be able to take that without some sort of very bad team fight erupting. Yeah, double globals are nice on Spenu as far as that what that Shen can do. Yeah, they're great. And I am Lilac just hasn't been able to get too much of an advantage over this Shen. He's caught up when it comes to the CS, but you know, with Shen having to go for the Spirit Visage as his first item, it delayed his ability to push the lane with the Sunfire Cape and the Bami Cinder. That means that Lilac did enough work on the top side that he is going to take that first tower of the game. Frozen's going to try to steal this blue buff here. He's got the ward, and here it comes. Oh, close one. Sassen got it. Oh, meanwhile, in the bot lane, some action. Ignar gets taken out. There's a kill for Nuclear. Roar on the run there. Yeah, interesting that Ignar was caught that far forward. I mean, there weren't any flashes in that lane, so. But Nuclear and Secret making it work in the bottom side. No punishment for that action. So this may set up Nuclear for a nice push on this tower. He needs to start getting turrets down while he has this Trinity Force. Blade is still spinning. Oh, wow, Roar walks right into a W stun. There's another kill for Nuclear Spooky right there, though. Shen Alt coming in. Can he kill him in time? He can, it looks like. Wow, he gets out. It is indeed Ragnarok for Nuclear. <laughs> that was so close <laughs> to that Shen port right there. Yeah. Risky situation. Spooky has the balls, though, gets it done. And now they're going to try and start. Catch is going to delay Spooky right here with a Prey Seeker. Oh, Ignar. Oh, uh, what are you doing, Ignar? Wow. They don't want to pursue it too much. Ignar does have a lot of HP. You know, IM has been really doing their best to kind of give away this lead over the last uh, few minutes here. It's OK. It's early Runeglaive Ezreal, Doa. You got it locked once this once this comes in. We're still on 513, okay. so. As long if as you it, say so. He's just so strong in the late game when it comes to his ability to just chunk people off of objectives. You basically just get objectives for free. It's not that hard to hit true shot barrage when people are marshalling around a dragon or a baron. If they lose this game now, we get to call me the analyst from now on. <laughs> Is that how it works? I think so. What happens if uh, they win? Then uh, things stay as they are, because well, you were right. I'm not, I'm not taking that bet. Oh, sounds really good for me. I don't know why he would do it. <laughs> oh, well. How about this? Okay. If, if I am wins this game, you have to call me the analyst in Hearthstone. Well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, you never cast that, so I'll, I'll never, have to, never have to own up on that bet. Oh, they're going to try to catch a nuclear here. Nope, they're just going to run at him threateningly. I think I am going to win, though. Yeah, it does, does seem like they've got a good thing going. They have an Olaf, which is getting scarier and scarier, that Sasin and the rest of Spenu don't really have a way to peel off of their back line. Too much. We. That would be my sound effect if I did the voice <laughs> of the saplings. We. <laughs> Where's the uh, the Doa sapling, where it's just your head? I know. Bring back that twitch emote. 
I would just go, oh. <laughs> That'd be great. How come uh, there isn't some sort of gore-filled Maokai skin where he just throws severed heads? They already have that graveyard, the yeah. spooky one. You'd think he'd be throwing parts of exhumed bodies. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think you definitely have to have the French Revolution Maokai skin <laughs> where he just has a guillotine on his back. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. I can see where you're going with this, and I, I like it, but I don't know. I don't know if... Oh, Flash Tibbers onto Roar. I don't know if he's making out of that one. Solar Flare slows things up a bit. Shen comes in. They can't save their AD carry, though. Two-Shot Barrage comes through a bit late. Frozen's Two-Shot Barrage and team fights have not uh, done really great work. And Spenu's going to be able to take the bottom turret. But Spenu has the... They, they have the Shen ult up again, even though Lilac could follow. Looks like it... Well, actually, it looks like his TP just came back up. So just a very close play. Lilac is going to get some decent damage down. Onto the tier two, maybe about a quarter of it before he has to back off. Soul now with the Sunfire Cape, or not quite, but with the Bobby Cinder still, will be able to counteract that just a little bit. Yeah, and he's just holding an open flame at this point. That's that's really dangerous. What is Riot teaching people? Play with fire? It's not good. Yeah, that's that's exactly what Annie does. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's her magical power, though. I mean, Shen just went and bought it, just carrying it around with him. <laughs> That's irresponsible. No, it's not. Not if you're fighting a tree. <laughs> okay. Good point. You got me there. That's true. Fire versus trees is a, a pretty, pretty traditionally a, a historically good matchup for the fire. Yeah. And don't tell me that if you had to fight a giant sentient tree that you wouldn't carry around some open flame with you. I would carry around like a, a bunch of lumberjacks. <laughs> Just throw them, you know, over at the tree. <laughs> throw the lumberjacks? Yeah. You're a lot stronger than I thought. Surprise. <laughs> Dragging up in five seconds. For, <laughs> the more you know. And I am could really use this dragon. Well, I think they're going to probably secure this dragon. Of course, there's still that chance for the Shen to come in, but he's not going to be doing it with the help of the shield. Nobody really starting this yet. Instead, they swap Roar to the mid lane for the wave clear. Well, they're kind of giving Soul a lot of time to get this ultimate back right now. I feel like if you're IM, you kind of need to pull the trigger on this one. That's smart of Lilac, though. Go ahead and deny the blue buff while you go ahead and wait here. Nobody has vision to stop you from doing that. We'll Might take well. a decent amount of damage, but you can always just recall it by Hulk Guard. Yeah, and you are Maokai. You are tanky. And we do see the uh, the loot and Zeku coming in from Frozen. Obviously, uh oh. Whoa! Nice true shot barrage. Big damage done to Spenu. As I was about to say, it doesn't proc off of the Q in 513, but it sure as hell procs off of the R. That's right. And LZI am gonna turn right onto that dragon. Then Spenu gonna try to contest it. They're a little bit low on health. If Lilac comes in here and gets in the back line, things could get messy. Catch takes a lot of damage as well, too. Dragon about to release. They need to finish it now. They get it. Oh, Solar Flare doesn't quite catch Catch. It slows him. Undertow does work as well, too. Here comes the teleport. They're going to be right on top of Sausage. Spooky has to run away from the Chaos Storm. Tibbers comes down, doesn't do a whole lot. Soul gets the taunt. Maokai gets a kill, though. And Frozen just kiting back with that Rune Glaive Ezreal. Another two shot barrage comes through. Whoa, Arcane shifts right into Nuclear, but Nuclear able to get the kill there. Meanwhile, Lilac on top of everybody, but. Everybody is going to turn right onto Lilac. Soul with the taunt. He actually misses it point blank. <laughs> wow. And uh, it's going to be a kill for Sasan in the end. Yeah, just trying oh, to dear. live. He did get a little bit of extra time thanks to his passive, but that's a four for three in favor of Spenu. However, they don't get the dragon, so that's another dragon over. They do take a gold lead. And, I mean, I am insisting on engaging after missing the solar flare may have been a bit of an overcommitment, especially since you're still trying to kind of wait out the quirky power spike right here. There was some decent poke, and you're only going to get stronger. So if you're IM, just throw out the solar flare and leave. I mean, who cares? You you have this immensely powerful late game composition. Frozen got way too deep on this one as well, too. Yeah, so you just wasted your ult right there. Spooky has been chunked out already, so he can't commit to the back line, and he's also still waiting to scale. So a bit of a questionable engagement there from Spenu, or from uh, IM rather, after the objective was already secured, getting greedy. Uh, if Nuclear hadn't flashed that true shot barrage, he would have been very, very dead. 
And now I am pushing down the mid lane. They're going to try to get this tier one perfect solar flare on the sauce, and they're going to come in with the two shot barrage as well. Stun doesn't quite land. He is able to get out of that. Can't get out of losing their turret, though. And here comes Secret. Has the stun loaded up, has Tibbers and Flash, but doesn't quite find the angle to come in for the big stun. Yep, and some nice zoning right there. Spooky can't be CC'd, and after Sasset is hit by the True Shot Barrage, he just has to back off. No way that he can actually defend the turret, so I am group, and they start to knock down some of these towers. Frozen going for a QSS. Concerned about that anti engage. Well, that won't be much of an issue for him any longer. And that Void Staff is going to do some work. Oh boy, they found Lilac. Lilac twists advance back in. Roar is right there. Here comes. Wow, that's a lot of damage from the two shot barrage. Nuclear still gets the kill on the Lilac, though. Roar on the run now. Here comes Frozen. He's got to clean this one up. One kill already with that Q. Two shot barrage did work. Secret in a lot of trouble. Nice there we shot. go. The double kill gets it with the AoE. I think he might have just straight up landed that one. Nuclear still in trouble. Nice solar flare and Frozen picks up the triple. Will he make it a quadra? Not quite as Roar. Takes it away. Sasson on the run. Great Q again, or great E rather. Zenith Blade for Ignar comes in. Sasson in a lot of trouble as Spooky comes around the outside and Frozen finishes that fight with four kills to his name. That is exactly what LZIM wanted. Yeah, it was. And there's not going to be much of a response from Spenu right here. Sure, they have TP, but it's another 25 seconds. Plenty of time for them to burn through this bear. And they have the true damage from Olaf to help them out here. So a lot of tanking is a lot of damage. And I am just turning that engagement right around. Well, Catch is doing what he can, but there is really not much he can do to stop I am from taking this Baron, and they do. Ignar played that Dude, really well. I was just about to say, that was some great Leona playing that team fight. So Lilac does get a little bit caught out here, but everybody already on the top side, notice that, I mean, we have the Ezreal already at the red buff, so he doesn't have to go very far. And look at Ignar right here. He's going to hold, oh, he actually doesn't even have the solar flare up at this point in the fight. He gets it up later on as things tick down. Frozen with a more aggressive play, and Ignar just waiting on that old is up now. So he gets onto nuclear, chains it very nicely into the solar flare and his E. And then another flash forward on the E. Spooky already on the wow. outside, too, to get onto Sasin and just so much long range damage. And the Essence Flux picks up the kill from the Ezreal. A pretty fantastic game from Ignar so far. Frozen. Yeah, died in lane that one time, but. Yeah, well, it happens. You know, you haven't played Leona for a while. You're like, oh, how tanky am I? I forgot. Now he knows. Frozen really uh, coming alive in that last team fight as well with the four kills on that Runeglaive Ezreal. He's got his Void Staff now and another needlessly large rod besides that. So the damage coming out of Frozen is just going to be insane for the rest of the game. Well, I mean, he's almost at six items at 30 minutes. Uh, he's ahead in farm versus the victor. He has that 5-1-3 and three score line and just a mountain of gold right now. Yep. Mountain of gold. Which sounds good, unless you try to think about moving it. You're like, well, it's I guess okay. I'm just going to live here. You just have to pay the movers a small percentage of that gold, and <laughs> you can move it wherever you want. I suppose. Mountain, though? Alternatively, you could be a dragon and really big. That's the thing, is your mountain of gold may attract a dragon from the north, and then, <laughs> uh, then you're in trouble. Then you're out on your own. You're homeless you know? after that. You try to you try to take some caves away from some uh, goblins. That doesn't go well. You know you've got like a shield made out of oak, but you know it keeps you alive for one fight, but doesn't oh. really help you get the gold back. Oak's Got's kind of a, a bad shield compared to you know adamantium. Other shield. Yeah, or Captain America's shield, vibranium. <laughs> Is, is it actually called vibranium? Yeah, man. Think of when think of when the name for that shield was invented. 1940. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. You got it now. It's all coming together. But you know, Tolkien couldn't use that. It, was, it wouldn't be good as Thorin vibranium shield. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well. And there's another dragon for I am. Roar just taking that on his own. It's three to one in dragons right now. So I am. Kind of looking to close this one out fairly soon. They've got the Baron buff. They've got the entire map. And they should, before too long, barring any sort of crazy circumstances, have the win. 
Now, not too far up in terms of gold, but I mean, the gold is just on the right person. And that is Frozen Ezreal. Here we go. Oh, Le Flair in the secret. Two shot Barrage takes a big chunk out of Sassen, but no follow up. Ooh, there's the Tibbers. Spell shielded or uh, cleansed, rather, by Frozen as he loads more damage in there with the Mystic Shots. That was a really good QSS Arcane ship from Frozen. That yes, was, was so fast. And so that's going to mean another mid lane turret. Close call there, but yeah, Frozen getting out of it in a hurry. And now just rotating down to that bottom lane. Indeed, so here they come. I am just looking to take these turrets very methodically as well they can. And group to five, Shen still on the split push, but he has both globals available, Lilac. He's already used his teleport recently. Oh, are they going to go in? We'll see. They could try it. Sivir uses the ultimate to get away. They're a little bit too low to fight this. Frozen especially really hurting here. Well, they saw the Stand United coming in on, on the catch, and they just yeah. said, nope, we're out of here. No reason to pursue this. We have a lot of money to spend at the moment. Not going to take that risk. It's good enough that we got the Shen uh, ultimate out, and we're going to be able to push out the top side. Yeah, Frozen just throwing his two-shot barrage through the mid lane, I believe, just to keep that lane from pushing up too hard while everybody's back to base. Sassen will still be able to shove it a bit. Should be okay, though. Sassen's starting to get some serious damage, but still still not really a lot you can say to compare it to this Runeglaive Ezreal. Well, if he can get on top of the Runeglaive Ez, he could probably one-shot him. That's going to be pretty nice, but Runeglaive Ez now at six items, and again, engaging onto that back line because Annie is just going to be shut down by the QSS as long as we see Frozen be as fast as he was on that last engagement. There's not too much that Victor's going to be able to do, barring some sort of crazy flank where they don't have a ward and they're trying to push up and they can just instantly kill Frozen, which we've seen happen to Runeglaive Ez. Yeah, I mean, that's really kind of how you handle him, is you just blow him up before he can get away and start kiting. Yeah, it's just really, really difficult with Shen and Rek'Sai and the only reliable gauge being Annie and the QSS being done so early to actually make that work. Right. So I am having to pull back and play a little bit quieter for the next uh, minute or two. Baron is going to be up in the one minute. You'd imagine they probably want that. I would imagine that. I would imagine. Spooky Zoloff has been really fun to watch. It's been pretty effective so far this game in terms of just making something that uh, Spender really can't handle. Well, I'm not actually that big of a fan of Jungle Olaf right now, generally speaking. But Works when, okay when here. you can't get counterpicked by Jarvan and against the kind of composition that Spenu is running, yeah, it definitely does. Yeah. I think it circumstantially is quite good. I mean, I agree. In, in general right now, the Olaf obviously is not the strongest pick. But in this particular game where Corky and Victor are just going to be running for their lives the entire fight, it's pretty decent. And you, they saw that Rek'Sai first, and they said, well, if it's Rek'Sai, Rek'Sai is just not going to be good in the late game against this Olaf because there's nothing that Rek'Sai can do to peel. And when you're playing against Spenu 2, where they just don't have a lot of protection for the carries, yeah. it works out. I mean, you uh, notice, too, that he's just going to Ghost, too. He's not even using Flash. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you need Ghost on that Olaf yep. uh, most of the time to make it work. And he also has the Distortion Enchantment, so Ghost is going to be up very frequently. Oh, yeah. All right, Baron is up. Dragon in a uh, little under two minutes. And what will IM choose to do? Hiding in the brush for the moment. Oh, can be found in the brush. You can't hide against a Rek'Sai. You Pretty have to hard commit to against a Rek'Sai. Or get there first. Get there before the Tremor Sense reaches you. Well, I mean, it's just the Grey Seeker can check brushes from such a long range. IM was there first. True. Ooh, two shot barrage. Nuclear really takes a lot of damage. Can sustain up very quickly though, so that may not have been the best use of that ultimate. Solar Flare comes down, gets a big slow, but where's the rest of IM? I don't know, that was very awkward. Lilac is in the middle of a recall. I mean, I guess they're just trying to push them away, but that, that seemed a bit odd, didn't it? Yeah, now we're gonna see uh -oh. him go in. Tibbers comes in, Roar. Spell not shields. affected by that immediately, yep. Sassen still okay, Chanel coming in onto him. Spooky pops Ragnarok. And Soul taking a bit of damage, Frozen just attacking. It's kind of reverse kiting now. 
means they're engaging. Engaging. <laughs> that's all. Oh, yeah, that's a good uh, reverse kite. Was, comp. Was, yeah, nice it's. Uh, <laughs> I like it. It's uh, reverse kite the Baron after reverse <laughs> kiting the Rift Scuttler. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't uh, engage. You just got to reverse kite them. The anti kite is definitely a pull effect here. That's right. And uh, oh, catch getting caught a little bit. Lilac's gonna flash over the wall. Wow, that was quite the commitment. Oh, he did force catch his flash there too. He so, did. And now he's gonna die. Oh, never mind. Frozen with another kill. Ezreal must feast. Oh. Lilac on the soul there. And they're gonna be able to start to take apart these turrets very, very easily. And this could be a dead inhibitor really easily for Spenu. Not a lot of defense. And are they just going to keep pushing here? Nope. Playing it safe. Oh, yeah. So there's Dragon. Nuclear's taking it by himself. Okay, I guess they'll give you a, they'll give Spenu their second Dragon. Well, they're like, well, can't save the inhibitor, but we maybe can stop a five Dragon stack and watch Lilac's face be sad. Oh. Wah, wah. Nuclear got away with it. He did. You can't let you can't let people steal from you, Doa. Got to put your. Foot I usually down. don't. Yeah. You know, when I was in high school, somebody stole all of my Magic: The Gathering cards out of my locker. What a jerk! I know. That was a rough day. They got all my Star Wars card game cards too. Damn. My entire collection gone like that. Well, Thanks for bringing that memory up. Yep, it was all me, Doa. It was you. I knew it. <laughs> you had all those. Old Star Wars cards at your place, and I and you said they weren't mine. Yep, I really just uh, resort to a life of stealing cardboard. It's stalking me for years. Wow. The printed cardboard. That's I my thought fortune. it was. I thought it was just Xbox Live a decade ago, but no, it went back <laughs> further than that. <laughs> I am trying to push through this tier two, and they'll be able to get it. You know, I haven't been the biggest. Uh, Fan of of uh, frozen shoe shop barrages. Uh, they've been okay, but not great. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like he's kind of using it like a Caitlyn ult to try to chunk somebody out to push an objective or That's win fine. a team fight. But it'd be fine if he hit people with it. That's true. Oh, oh that was a terrible Tibbers. And he was trying to get Olaf too. How's that going to work? Secret very very low. Olaf is on you now. Another kill for Frozen Sassen on the run. There goes the turret. And this is just going to be cleanup for Mayhem at this point. There goes the inhibitor, and they can probably just end it right now, but they're not going to. Going to make it a very complete victory, it looks like. Might as well. Take out what you can. Oh, Lilac going really deep. He's going to get taken out. There's a kill for Sassen. Ignar comes in. Soul quite, a, quite low as well. Two shot. Barrage is going to, whoa, not actually kill him. Wow. Shen's pretty tanky. Meanwhile. More kills come in. Nuclear manages to pick off Ignar, but I think it's still going to be the game. Very messy here. Frozen. Oh, no. Who gives Nuclear the double kill? Got killed by the turret as well. And this is about the messiest end of a game I've ever seen. Roar. He's, He's going that spell for it. Shield. He is. He's got help from Spooky as well. He wants yeah. to kill on Nuclear. There we go. On to Soul as well, too. There's a double kill. Oh, Secret's back. With the inhibitor. The Nexus is everything gone, and I am takes game one. Well, that Runeglaive Ezreal just doing a lot of work, and the gank, yeah. especially from Ignar early, really turning that game on its head, making it very difficult for Sassen to use the early wave clear to actually take turrets and get a lead and keep the Ezreal contained. But you have to feel to a certain degree, Spenu actually sort of picked themselves into that corner. And they still, yeah, they tried to make it a contest, but really could not get any leads in that game. It just looked like they had no contingency plan for the Rune Glaive as. And if you're on blue side, you always have to have a plan for if the enemy picks mid Ezreal. Because if you yep. don't, it's so hard to contain him. And especially when that mid lane gank comes through. You know what you Do want you to like say? him from the movies in the 90s? I'm trying to think of a movie that uh, I li I've liked him in since Batman Forever. But uh, <laughs> well, let's, let me think about it as we go into picks and bans here for game number two. Uh, yes, only Gragas the highest Band. quality Batman movies for you. That's Dora. right. That's right. Forget the Truman Show. It's really all about the Batman Forever. I actually like Jim Carrey much more when he's a, in a dramatic role, like Eternal Sunshine, rather than, uh, oh, than a comedic role. I find I it very annoying in comedic roles. He can be. He can also be funny, too, though. 
I disagree. Mostly annoying. <laughs> yeah, you know. Fun with Dick and Jane was a good movie, though. I haven't seen it. I enjoyed it. Not a lot of not a lot of people know it exists. It's like a it's like a, a bridge. It's like a semi-serious movie. Somebody out there has seen it. Everybody's seen Batman Forever, though. Oh, God. That movie is so bad. Worse than Batman and Robin? Oh, yeah, it actually is. I like Batman <laughs> and Robin more. I actually really like Batman and Robin because it is, like, the ultimate campy superhero movie, and I think that's wonderful. <laughs> like, you can tell everybody in that movie knew exactly what they were making. They're like, you know what? We're just going to go ham. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger on Mr. Freeze. He's like, oh, you know what? Geez. I'm just going to do this to the best of my abilities. I'm just going to have fun with it. I appreciate that. There's a NAR band. So let's talk about this this pick band phase. Probably should do that a bit, huh? I guess. Well, Grog yeah. and Alistair are a bit interesting uh, in terms of the bands. I figured we'd see that as real band on the blue side. And the NAR, uh, of course, from Lilac, again, maybe not the most critical champion. For playing against Expression, we've seen a lot of those NAR bands. But maybe you just don't want to give him the easiest laning phase or a very safe laner like NAR. Because he was punished. He did die in that 2v1 straight up in the first game didn't end up meaning a whole lot. So they're going to ban Rise on the blue side, leaving the Rune Glaive Ezreal up for Sasin. Not we'll sure see. about that. Unless they're going to first pick it for Frozen. I mean, and hope that they, uh, Spedu doesn't know about this Braum thing. Yeah, that's, I mean, what do you do here? If you're IM, maybe you first pick the Braum or the Maokai in order to help deal with the Rune Glaive Ezreal. We could. Spenu had no answer for it. They're going to ban the Fizz. So, Spenu, two games in a row. Fizz bans. Very so intriguing. If you're IM, can't you just pick up Maokai? Yep, you absolutely could. You run the risk of giving the Braum over in that case, and Braum is very helpful in terms of shutting down the Ma or the uh, Runeglaive Ezreal pickup. So, True. it's a bit of a... Both of those champions strong against the mid lane as real, able to either block or get that targeted engage on that champion. But you know what? Maybe if you're IM, you're going to take Braum, you're going to take the Olaf again, which will help you get into that back line. Or you just take the Ezreal. Yeah, but it's so difficult to flex that pick on the blue side because they're always going to know where it's going before they lock their mid laner in. And you could just start building against it immediately. They're going to do it. Okay. Yep. Didn't you see the near quadra kill? I guess, but now you can just take Maokai Braum and you will be very happy yeah. in this situation. Or Kale Rek'Sai. Oh, right, the, the Kale, the hidden Rune Glaive Ezreal counter. You just ult just yourself. Just ult yourself when the True Shot Barrage is coming through. You're like, boom, now what are you going to do? Can you handle it, Ezreal? Oh, and uh, stealing the Manu away from Lilac. <laughs> no. Nope, the Maokai, of course. Okay, they didn't take the Braum. But I don't think LZIM is a type of... I don't know if Ignar can really play Braum. I think he'll be just fine. I think he's a, quite a good... Quite a good support player and could definitely handle that pick. Uh, the Olaf here may be coming through again. As soon as they see the Rek'Sai, they know there's no threat of a Jarvan. So Olaf Braum is a definitely solid couple of picks right now. If you want to threaten that back line again and you've got some good deal with the Braum, they can't take that away to block any kind of true shot barrages, and it does make it so that you're more likely to have the mid lane Ezreal. Brom Siver is probably okay here as well. Yeah, they're, that's they're, what they're gonna take. I mean, Spen is obviously not going to take the Olaf away. They have Rek'Sai, <laughs> they have Maokai, there's not anywhere else for Olaf to go. So, We've seen Faker, of course, do well on the mid Aurelia, but do you think Sasson really wants to play this into the Ezreal? I don't know. There's no reason to do that right now because you don't have to show a mid lane pick until you know exactly where that Ezreal is going. Right now, you just take AD carry and support, call it a day, take the winning lane with the Kog'Maw. Uh, you have four, uh, I don't know about that. I think the Kog'Maw is definitely a bit stronger here. 
But I think they're a little bit worried about this Olaf coming through again, and maybe they want something with a bit more peel for him. Looks like Spenu has been a little bit baited by these early rec size because they are finding themselves in a tough situation when it comes to how to cope with an Olaf in their back line. You know, the Thresh is really not going to help with that. Because Ragnarok is going to run right through the box, right through everything else. It's Azir can help with it, though. And Azir is still going to be a strong pick against Runeglaive Ezreal in the mid lane. Okay. Uh, because even though Olaf can run through the ultimate, the Emperor's Divide, while the animation is rolling, as soon as it stops, he can no longer get through there. Yeah, because at that point, it becomes a wall, and he can't run yep. through walls yet. Yet. Haven't gotten to that patch. Oh, God, I hope that never happens. Well, what do you think about a, uh, a Mumu here? Not great. <laughs> How about a Skarner? <laughs> How about they're just trolling Cloud Templar? That's what I think they're doing. How about a Rambus? So, top lane going for the Hecarim. And again, Lilac hasn't had a lot of success. I think you just go for the Shen here, something very stable that he can react to, get the shield onto the Ezreal, make sure that you can play conservatively. It'll actually be the Evelyn here, so maybe looking for that Shen Evelyn combo that we used to see so commonly in seasons past, going right. for that very hard backline engage. But of course, it does leave them with less peel for the Ez. The good old submarine. What will the final pick be for the mid lane? I was wondering about the Lulu actually a bit. Well, teams like EDG have been returning to the Shen Eve combo as of late. Yeah. And yes, maybe maybe the Zed for Sasin. Will he be so I bold? Know. I mean, if you pick the Zed, whoever he ults on is just going to get Shen ulted. I tend to agree with that. I tend to agree with that. I don't think that Zed, outside of a very few special players that may be ultra-threatening on that champion like Mickey, probably not exactly a top-tier pick at the moment, especially, like I said, uh, the Azir is still going to be strong here. You have a very potent late-game combination. And it'll be Lulu instead. So Juggermaw coming through for Spenu. It's a, one of the compositions that they actually started out this season doing okay on. They uh, they managed to scrape together a nice lead against SK Telecom towards the beginning of the season. Couldn't close out the game. Yeah. But they, they've shown that they can play with this pick. Now, I think this is still a bit risky because the Evelyn flanks are going to be very effective against this composition because you tend to stay all nice and grouped up if you were a Juggermaw, and that leads to possibly very large Agony's Embrace uh, taunt combos from the Shen and the Evelyn, unless you have your flanks very, very well warded with pink wards. Yeah, not to mention, too, this uh, Lulu is going to be kind of vulnerable to the Ezreal. She's going to get blown up pretty quickly. Does have that lane bully status, though. Really is true. punishing in the early game. Maybe Sasin can actually get that mid turret down and shut Frozen down. But Braum's going to be there for the ganks, and Braum has really strong ganks early on the mid lane with those concussive blows. He can force a lot of summoners out in the early game. So they're going to have to be much more cautious and make sure that Frozen can't get that big advantage one more time. Yeah, well, we'll see. Frozen with an MVP performance, supposedly. On Ezreal last game, we'll see if he can perform well this time around and give I am the 2-0. Again, both of these teams probably going to be going to relegations anyway, so most likely this match is only about the pride. But we'll see if I am can make it happen, or will Spenu tie it up? Time to get in the game and find out. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. Spenu Sonic Boom. Versus Longzhu, Incredible Miracle. And so Frozen has been given the mid Ezreal once again. And Spenu not taking the Braum, not really, not really worrying about it too much. We'll see how it goes. I'm just very surprised that they would take the Rek'Sai instead of the Braum. There were still a lot of good junglers available, and the Rek'Sai served to be sort of a bait in the last game into the Olaf pick, and uh, I mean, I am still coming out with a very strong composition. They do have to play the Evelyn into the Rek'Sai, which is never ideal. Hmm. We'll see if Ketch can play around Sasin just a little bit better. Sasin 
Going for a very safe laning champion in that Lulu, but Nuclear really going to have to show up big here late. They want to take home a win and not just get 2 owed by Incredible Miracle. Yep. This is uh, theoretically speaking there. Oh, look at this. Big action in the bottom lane. Ignar gets played in, but Secret the one taking a lot of damage, as is Nuclear. Good trades on Roar, though. That was that was a bit interesting. Yeah, this, uh, the old brush cheese is standing in there, and they weren't actually able to successfully proc any of the concussive blows, and now Roar not really going to have time to go back into base. So starting on under 50% HP, very nice on an already winning matchup for the Kog'Maw versus the Sivir. That's a rough start for Roar. See if Ignar can protect him. At least they do have that. At least they do have a support that can offer a lot of protection in lane, but that doesn't stop the auto attacks from coming in from Secret. Yeah, he's able to get right around the minion wave and get some of that extra damage. So. We are in an era, too, where Brahm's Q does a, a bit more damage, too, so the poking onto nuclear can be a bit more of a worry as well for Spenu. Indeed, Ben. He's going to fall back to the turret immediately. Play it. A little bit conservatively, Nuclear did end up with a little bit more damage as a result of that push onto him. So it looks like not too much going to happen right now. Standard lanes this game as Evelyn moves down from the blue to the red buff. And we will see mirror jungling, so catch coming down into the bottom side as well. And no super early ganks in mid or anything like that. And that means Frozen will be pushed in for a little while this game. Level two finally taken by Spenu. And so, Spooky had an okay game on the Olaf, but how is he going to do on this Evelyn? Again, we just don't really know a lot about this guy. Very new player in the league. Only his third game ever right now. Yeah, and very young player, too. So, still a lot of time for development from this guy. Yeah, and Lilac on Shen this time. He did okay on the Maokai last game. But this one's a little bit a little bit more challenging. They're gonna really need to, him to be on the ball with the ultimates. Now Spooky actually only turned 17 at the end of January this year, so he is quite young indeed. Barely old enough to play here at the highest level of competition in Korea. And being thrown in right off the bat. Ouch. Is that uh, I don't know, that pre sneaker didn't really look like it hurt very much. That's why I just said, ouch. <laughs> Not a blood-curdling scream of pain. Yeah, man, you know, you like stub your toe and you go, ouch, or you get a paper cut. It's about as much damage as pre sneaker does. The paper cut of League of Legends? I don't know, I don't even know if it hurts that much, honestly. Yeah, well, it's more than what Tom Kench does anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that champion. A lot of utility, but not a lot of damage. Here we go. Oh, yeah, Nuclear going to be stunned, but a little bit late. A lot of damage. But he gets out on the lantern, able to click that just in time. The nick of time before those concussive blows actually got the stun down. So he was stunned on the, at the end of the lantern hall instead. Yeah. So getting denied here as a result of that gank. Nuclear not really able to quite get some nice Bio Arcane Barrage trades early in this game. Pogma being behind, too, is not exactly what Spenu wants to have at the beginning of this game. Yeah, getting Kog'Maw behind it. And again, we see IM. They focus around this Kog'Ma. They know that's the major source of damage. And Frozen's doing fine. Frozen is out-farming Sasen right now in the mid lane, so there's not really a whole lot of concern. No pressure yet put down by Catch onto the Rune Glaive as. Wow, yeah. I mean, you'd think if anyone would be behind right now, it'd be Sasen. Or it'd be uh, Frozen, rather. Well. The, the thing is, when you play against these low wave clear mid laners like Cassidin or Runeglaive Ezreal, you really need your jungler to work with you to get vision because you have to be able to play very aggressively, very safely. Uh, to get the, the tower to start really taking over the map and punish them, we're just not seeing that. Finally, we see some of these uh, deep wards coming down, but Lilac simply just walking into the river and taking out the pink ward, so that's one less ward that Spenu has to work with right now. You really can't count on catch for something like that, too, unfortunately. It's, it's yep, just... Yeah, it's true. Yeah, he has not been really very coordinated all season long. Uh-oh. 
that. There's Tremor Sense. Yep. Well, it's not quite that far away, so they were just looking to see what they could get. And they also had the Wolf Spirit on him the whole time, so they knew precisely where that Rek'Sai was. Right. Lilac, of course, a little bit behind uh, in CS in the top lane, but that's not too surprising with the Shen, so it's not a huge concern. Wow, nuclear, very low. Still as the summoners, but certainly being poked out pretty hard in this lane. Oh, true shot barrage. <laughs> nice try. Nice attempt there, but wasn't very well coordinated. I am could have maybe played a bit more aggressively and had him walk back into it. Yeah, I mean, if you kind of distract him, then he's going to maybe get hit by it. But still, everything going very smoothly for Incredible Miracle this game. Uh, Shen is six right now. Maybe they can make some sort of play on the bottom lane in conjunction with the True Shot Barrage. You may see them start thinking about setting up a dive onto that Kog'Maw because if the Kog'Maw starts to flounder, basically Spenu will never have enough damage with his composition to make it work. Yeah, that's a big concern right now. And I am, last game, they really didn't seem to to uh, be too slow about closing out the game once they had that game-winning advantage, too. Okay, so a bit of a red buff threat here. Spooky and Ignar are joining forces on this invasion, but Secret there to counteract it a bit. And I am doesn't want to really overcommit to that right now. They're not playing from a position of power quite at this point in the game. Well, they do have the Shen ult. Yeah, and Spooky does take. The big raptor, Ignar, not getting hit with that death sentence, so they'll get out without any issues. Yeah, not going to be able to clear a ward with the raptor buff either, so yeah. certainly not the most advantageous position. Uh, Nuclear starting to catch up in terms of CS, though. He has that sheet now, and in that 1v1, Sivir not really going to be able to do too much to him. Yeah, the it's they really can't leave Sivir in the 1v1 once Nuclear hits 6, can they? No, B. Quite dangerous, but it looks like Spooky and Ignar want to keep harassing this red buff. Yeah, looks like they might even be able to take it, too. Well, Frozen has the angle to get there a little bit faster right now. Sasen, not really using his mana to push up, finally starts using some of those Glitter Lances. Well, it's interesting. He's got kind of high mana for a, a Lulu right now in this position. Although, no, he did just go back. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, he did, mind. but he has to really focus more on pushing up. I mean, obviously there's a chance that somebody could come in behind him, but you know they're just trying to make a play onto the red buff right there. They can't get it. He's been now trying to get a steal of their own. Yeah, but they get caught oh, by Ignar, Jen, though. Jen, nope. So, yeah, Spenu may have been able to actually do something with that, considering that Frozen was under his tower with a cannon minion wave. a little bit reluctant, I guess, to play that aggressively. Yeah. And will it be a two-shot barrage going for that blue buff? Frozen tried for so many of them last game, but it's not going to find it this time around. Nope. I guess he's a little tired of using that ability. Well, I think you have a real opportunity to make a big difference in the bot lane this game with two-shot barrage. Yeah. That channel, the, the two global abilities of Stand United and True Shot Barrage really can turn things on their head. Yeah. Wow, Shen has so much money right now. Really hasn't had that many opportunities to recall. Here we go. There it is. Yep. And that is going to take a chunk out of nuclear, but it's not going to result in any sort of dives or anything from Roar or Ignar. Just going to let them push up the lane a little bit more, be aggressive, and Roar still with a nice CS lead. Yep, not much to say. I mean, as far as you're concerned, if you're Incredible Miracle, this game is going great right now. No yes. kills. You have a slight gold lead. You want this Ezreal just to keep on scaling very, very smoothly into the late game. You have more damage threats. You're going to feel confident about getting on top of the Kog'Maw because you have the good engage with the Evelyn Shen. As long as you can properly execute it. And it's really hard to stop against that kind of engage. That engage is so fundamentally strong because you have to ward with pink wards in order to spot it. That's it. You don't have any other options. Oh, Spooky taking a lot of damage from Sasa. Needs to be careful there. Uh, Lulu can pack a punch sometimes. Looks like LZIM is almost ready to push on that tier one and bottom lane, though. 
Well, they've been able to play aggressively. They have the superior wave clear, and they're not giving Nuclear time to poke. And frankly, Ketch hasn't just, he just hasn't been there on the bottom side to punish them for this aggression. Looks like Ketch may try something now, ah, but Death Sentence does right. not hit. I don't know. We can see Shen Lilac. He's falling back to his tower right now. He still only has a Doran's Blade. He hasn't gone back yet. <laughs> He's got to get out of there. He's got to go by. I mean, Soul Recalling now. I mean, you have two globals. Just go back at, like, basically, Lilac can't make a play right now because he doesn't have any items. He's got, like, 3,000 gold. You have two globals. Just TP back into lane if you need to and use your Stand United to match what Soul can bring out. Really actually hindering the playmaking ability of I am early in this game. I think that's a very bad decision. Straight up buys a Spirit Visage with his first back of the game. And then he will crab walk his way back to lane as uh, his team takes out the bottom turret too. So it turns out they didn't need him in the end. Well, he had the item by the time they played forward. I, I think that is a, a large, large risk. Yeah. I am easily could have had that turned around on him. I'm sure Maokai only had the two Doran's rings, but Maokai is tanky because of his ultimate, even when he doesn't have armor resists. Oh. Nuclear uh, recalling just in time? No, that wasn't nuclear. There's Braum. Ah, there we go. Just getting out of there. All right. In the nick of time, and... Oh! Oh, nearly smited that away. Spooky tried to take that from catch, but couldn't quite get it. Oh, and Frozen actually really poked out by Sassen here. Well, I mean, this is more how you would expect this matchup to go, but I am yeah. again coming down. Look how many pink wards they have around the mid lane now. They have yeah. three in immediate vicinity, so they're trying to prevent Sassen from really pushing forward and bullying the Ezreal and just keeping that farm even, and this is going to do it. I mean, Sassen is going to be afraid to commit. He also doesn't have Ignite in this game. Oh, well, they're going to try to make a play on the Sassen, or they were going to try to make a play, but he was able to get away with the Whimsy. I mean, I don't really get that either. It, Sassen didn't have kill pressure, really, without the Ignite. Going for the Cleanse, obviously he's afraid of the Braum and Shen CC, but I think you just have to go with it and try and make a play onto the Ezreal. You can't just go even versus Runeglaive Ezreal and think you're going to win that poke war. Yeah, that's very true. Will there be a Dragon from IM? Recall canceled by Ignar. Could try it. Lilac still with both globals. Just make a play onto onto this bottom lane. Look how far Kogma is pushed forward right now. You have the true shot barrage. You can neatly fire over to any kind of bottom lane gank. You can at least play more aggressively when it comes to vision in the bottom side jungle if you're incredible miracle right now. So yeah, I mean, I know they want to scale up. They have the Avarice Blade. They don't have a completed Infinity Edge onto Roar. But still, I think you can I think you can push the envelope just a bit and see if you can get that big kill, score the big kill onto the Kog'Maw. Considering you've already done a very good job on him in the laning phase, making sure that he has a slight deficit. Oh, taunt onto Soul, and actually Ignar is going to come in here for the gank, tries to make the play. There's the knockup. Soul does not have Flash anymore. Are they actually going to be able to get him? Lilac flashes. Gonna get another stun from that passive. Soul still very tanky from his ultimate. They can go under turret, and that was a very, very long gank. But the kill does end up going to Lilac in the end. And Ignar played that pretty darn well. Coming in, very having the tip of the glacial fissure hit Soul. I thought it was going to miss after he committed uh, with the jump, but didn't even have to use Flash to pull it off. Gets the summoner spell out of Soul and gets the first blood onto Lilac. <laughs> Never thought I'd see the day. Lilac with that first blood, and will they be able to change this or turn this into a dragon now? No, there just wasn't enough of a reaction on the bottom side of the map. I mean, Spenu knew that there were two of them up there. You'd think Spenu could have made a play for that, huh? Yeah, I mean... Although, Frozen has a lot of poke, though. Uh, Lilac is still very high in HP, and yeah, he still had the Sand United to get down there, but if you make that play fast enough while they're still trying to kill the, Li the, the Maokai, maybe they'll be a little bit too late to actually do anything, but I think True. they're very concerned with how overextended the Kog'Maw is at this point in time. It should be. Getting that bottom turret that early has really helped IM 
I mean, they, it is kind of leisurely at this point when they just go in, take control of the jungle, get set up for that dragon. Well, there was just no punishment from from Spenu. Uh, when you have a Sivir playing that far up, you try and make a play with your top laner, try and do something right there, but catch really didn't help hardly at all. We saw them pushed up. We can On red side, you can have that gank where Rek'Sai comes through the try brush to at least push them off the objective, but Spenu just playing scared this game, honestly. they. They ha you have to be able to play aggressive, and you know, props to IM. I think maybe they realized that after game one that they didn't have the right mindset to even shut down this Rune Glaive as, so why not just first pick it? Yeah, seems to be the case. Secret, I don't think, has landed a single death sentence yet this game. I don't know why you would check the brush like that when you have Kog'Maw ult to do it. It's a good point. It's a very good question. Shot barrage just to push that wave up. And I am with a little bit of vision around the dragon, but not a ton. Oh, this should be a pretty easy dragon. The wave's being pushed up. They need nuclear to get more farm. He's now starting to fall further and further behind on a composition that is absolutely dependent on his itemization and damage output. Yeah, you just do not see a Kogma this far behind against a Sivir very often. You don't. All right, so is it time now? I mean, I will say that after six, there is the danger of the all-in, right? If you have the Braum there, it becomes very easy to stack the concussive blows. There's almost nothing you can do with the Sivirol because she's just going to move faster than you and be able to get the, the stun off. So it is dangerous to a degree. Pretty much. There's a grab on Ignar. Turned into a tiny thing, and whoa, barely escapes with his life, or does he? Nope, Nuclear comes in for the kill there. LZIM losing their support. Yeah, very greedy attempt there. Getting too close to that tower, and he just ultimately pays for it. Gets within the tower range. They drop absolutely everything on him. And not only that, but he <laughs> used Flash and Summoner Heal to die. Lilac decided not to ult there, too. Great point. Uh, it could have been that Soul was within range of him, but the shield still the yeah. shield still goes off even if it's canceled. That's the thing; is the shield still probably would have been enough to save him. Yeah, it would. Have been. Well, this is I don't know. I don't know. Lilac. Well, I, I just don't get it because Lilac hasn't been willing to make any kind of commitment to use his ultimate this game. Yeah. Or or his teleport, you know, just waiting so long before going back for his first buy, taking chip damage on the tower when he could just absolutely TP into the top lane and play around his ult. Oh, meanwhile, big melee in the bot lane right now. Ignar very, very low, could still be in trouble. Here comes the teleport in for Spenu. Meanwhile, Lilac decides to finally come down. They get a kill. See, it was all calculated secret. for that moment. He had to get the kill on the next one. There you go. It was the next one, then teleports right back up to top lane. Yep, just wants to push the lane forward, doesn't want to give up any more damage onto the turret. With how uh, greedy Lilac is being this game, I feel like we could have a Shen skin called Shebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> Shebenezer Scrooge, is that right? That's right. Just keeps it all for himself. Just sits there counting his money in lane. <laughs> Pretty much. Counting his gold. I don't know. Old, makes about as much sense as Shen being a ninja, so. Why not? I'll take it. Baker bless us, everyone. <laughs> it's a Christmas incredible miracle. Oh, and it's going to be a dive onto Soul as well. Soul pops the ultimate right away, gets out with the lantern. Oh, there's a grab on the Spooky. They're going to need to turn this around again. Soul comes back in. Spooky, very, very low. Dodges the ultimate with the flash. Nuclear still chasing. Braum gives him a little bit more tankiness. Nice low into secret. Soul comes in with the flash. Arcane smash and Ignar dying for his jungler. <laughs> a noble sacrifice. A uh, noble sacrifice indeed. Maybe a bit uh, biting off more than they could chew with that gank. And Sivir here just going to leave those minions to the turret. Sasin goes into the bottom side to clean it up again. Frozen is stuck right now at his tier one. And Lilac will just take the gromp and move on with his life. But they are going to sacrifice a tier one turret for that. A little bit of failed tower diving right there that I am brought into play. So we see that gold capturing just a hair.
Yep. And Frozen hasn't really been able to make a big difference yet with this Ezreal. Sasa going for a very interesting build, actually. He is not building standard uh, Juggermaw for the Lulu, where we would see something like a uh, Rillanomicon or a Chalice into a Death Cap, because you really want to maximize that AP. Yeah. Instead, he's choosing to go for an AP damage poke build instead. So his shields and his whimsies will not be doing quite so much at this stage of the game, but he will be more of a damage threat here. And I think this is an interesting adaptation, considering that Nuclear is behind. You have to have something there, right? True. If you're going to team fight in case something breaks out on the map. So I actually like what Sausage's doing here as a sort of triage build when you know you need more time for your Kog'Maw to get big. Yeah, Bronze Shield does make it difficult for those Glitter Lances to get through, though. So in a team fight, that Lulu may not be quite as helpful. Shot Barrage goes through the jungle, does a bit of damage. Yeah, it doesn't get Sassen. the blue buff. Uh, nope. He's still taken by Sassen, but Frozen continues to pound away at this mid lane turret. Well, not really, it looks like that. He's trying. That health bar not not moving too much in the mid lane. Whoa, Arcane Shift right nice. through the Descendants. What happened there? Frozen gets taken out, that's what. And I think the Arcane shifted right as it hit him, so. Uh, still a CC I think at the that end was actually predicted by Secret. That just looked like a really good hook to me. I couldn't I see, see it. I want to see that again because yeah. I, I felt like it was going where Frozen wasn't, or it was going where Frozen was before the Arcane Shift. So I think it hit. I think it hit him right before he finished the spell animation. Well, Nuclear gets the kill in any case, and that is so important right now. The fact that Nuclear actually has the three kills in this game means that. He's starting to ramp up. That CS differential not going to mean quite so much, so at least the kills are going on to the right person for Spenu. True. Uh, secret. Hitting that grab. I want to see a replay of that. I want, to see, I want to see how that actually ended up working. Pretty sure he just predicted that, Doha. He predicted that Ezreal would arcane shift towards him. Uh, well, I have to see. I really? saw it out of the corner of my eye, so. Well, I was looking at it dead on. So I'm pretty sure. We'll see, though. Nah, we probably won't see. I'm <laughs> we'll sure people never tweet see it at us. the potentially impressive Thresh play made by Secret there, but he's been turning this game around. Uh, he's been punishing IM as they push too close to the turrets. They overcommit to some of these plays or their poke, and he's been the one who's been getting nuclear those kills in the last few minutes. Now, they're still behind in gold, but they are catching up slowly, and Sasen makes that play in the bottom side. He's going to get himself a turret. Wow. Gets out really easily with the Whimsy, too. And now the Dragon is live, though. They're going to go after it. A little bit of poke damage on to catch. As IM tries to bully their way into the river for this second Dragon of the game. Ignar in a little bit of trouble. Dodges the hook. Does get slowed. Throws out the Winter's Bite at the end. So takes a nice little chunk of damage. But Secret also starting to get very poked out. There's the True Shot Barrage onto Nuclear just to make sure they can't take down the mid turret. Yeah. There's one less tool that he's going to have there. Nuclear does have some lifesteal, so getting poked out not going to be the end of the world for him. Frozen, of course, still has all the poke from the W as well, too. Meanwhile, the top turret goes down in favor of IM. Lilac able to take that one against Soul's Maokai. Really great warding, though, for Spenu, well, actually, no, they've got enough wards around to see the dragon right now, and they have some interesting pink wards behind them, which makes a circuitous Evelyn gank a little bit more difficult through the jungle. So Spenu just trying to play around that mid lane right now, making sure that the Eve doesn't have any good opportunities to get the flank. Oh, I am. Find some position on this dragon. They are going to start it, and they get it in time, though. Spenu coming down, we'll see how much they want to fight this. They may just go for the mid turret, it looks like they will. So just trading the turret for that dragon, but that does mean that IM is up two dragons now. Well, but they want that initial gold boost, right? Uh, once they come online with the Juggermaw, they're still going to be doing a lot of damage. They have great team fighting potential. So maybe they're thinking, well, we get the gold now. They actually keep things relatively even in that score. And we, maybe we can come back at Dragon 4, maybe even Dragon 3, and make more of a game of it. It's possible. 
I am really kind of feeling the pressure to take down this mid lane turret too at this point, but Sasson's doing a pretty good job of defending it. Yeah, Sasson's been holding his own here, and now they're able to just continue to push up. They have it this bottom side wave in their favor, and Frozen just now gets his true shot barrage. He may have to pop that. Nope, not enough minions to justify it. So he's able to hold on to that for just a little bit longer. Only takes a small amount of damage onto his mid tier two. So what do you do if you're I am right now? Just kind of maintain your turrets and wait? Yep, yeah, I mean, if you can get some more of the, if you can get this mid lane turret, that would obviously be ideal, but you're gonna feel pretty comfortable with your, your dragon lead that you have already with the fact that uh, Frozen ended up with just a death in the laning phase, no real harm to his CS score, and he's getting huge. I mean, moving now more than likely into a void staff to counteract the build from Soul and the fact that there's already an Aegis on this team. Yep. There's the two-shot barrage. Takes a bit out of secret. Pushes up that wave a little bit. Yeah, not actually doing too much though, all things considered. Uh, Spendu yeah. has committed five people into this mid lane, so as long as LZIM can keep them here. Long time until the next minion wave as well too, and Sasson knows it. He's gonna go ahead and use this opportunity to go back, do some shopping. I am keeping things pushed up, though. Yeah, it's just not a whole lot. I mean, we see the... Uh-oh, grab on the Spooky. He's going to take a lot of damage. Your catch thinking about going in, but Spooky manages to get out with a little bit of help from Ignar. That does kind of derail the siege, though, a bit. Yeah, it definitely does, and... Uh, Spooky's been getting grabbed a lot lately. Well, he has, but Secret's also been doing a good job of just landing those hooks. But yes, in general, I am has been getting a bit too close to the tourists. They are getting perhaps a bit too greedy for this turret damage. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, the top lane battle has come down to the jungle, and Lilac on the run. It's a 1v4. What in the world is he doing there? There's the box. They're going to commit a lot to taking him out. Looks like they're going to be able to do it, though. Well, that was an interesting spot for Lilac to be. Yeah, I have no idea why he was actually there in that situation, considering the, all of his team had backed off the mid lane. and. He took a very dangerous route through the enemy jungle after pushing up the wave. Yeah. Looked a bit lazy. I mean, he got some deep wards down, but you don't, you don't need to really do that. Well, it's fine as long as his team is still in the mid lane and that they're able to respond to any aggression, but they just weren't right there. Yep. Well, I am pushing back up the mid lane again. Gonna give it a try. Two shot barrage. I still got to say, I'm not a big fan of Frozen's two shot barrages. Well, just checking the river right there to see what was going on. And they're all standing in a pink brush. Looks like they really, really want to fight this one. I guess so. And they're trying to punish IM's over aggression on these towers. Oh boy, here they come. Spooky there for possibly the counter engage. A lot of damage. Now the kiting begins. Spooky has to flash. Frozen gets Shen ulted. It's going to keep him safe, but Lilac gets grabbed as soon as he comes in. And you can see they fall back immediately to the choke, just yep. daring. Spenu to come through that area where the possibility of that big Evelyn ulti would be quite good for them, but Spenu smartly decides not to bite. They realize they got a lot of ults out already. No more Shen ult for the next few minutes, so that's a pretty big win for them. Yep. They didn't really have to expend anything from their side. Void staff for Frozen now, so that may help those two-shot barrages and his uh, other abilities do a little bit more damage at this point. Yeah, definitely needed that, but there's the end of the tower as Roar gets the final auto attack down. Yeah, that ties it up now for IM in terms of turrets against Spenu at this point. This game's been a lot closer than last game so far. You know, Nuclear's still way down on CS, but those three kills are really kind of keeping him afloat at this point. Well, yes, but are we going to see the last whisper by the next team fight? Because yeah. if he doesn't have that at Dragon, he may get slowed down pretty significantly by Lilac, considering that Lilac already building his second armor item. Well, staying afloat is not swimming. That's true. Uh, yes, that is that is true. He's, he's staying afloat, but not sure he, he is up to that big time Olympic swimming true. carrying capacity right now. <laughs> They don't call him Nuclear Phelps or anything, <laughs> which which is a great band name now that I think about it as well, too. Nuclear Phelps. That's that is right. a good band name. That was the name of my 
Uh, yeah, we'll go with Punk Rock punk, Band. It's a, good, it's a yeah, great yeah. Punk Band. I think so too, yeah. Nuclear Phelps. <laughs> That's a good one. They got a gold medal in Anarchy. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> That could be the first album title, Gold Medaling and Anarchy. <laughs> That's right. All right, well, Lilac going to start turning on the split push pressure. Soul has no TP to respond to this, so Spendu has to kind of all in on this dragon as soon as they are able. Now they're going to try, but the poke from IM is going to be pretty real here. Yeah, and they're very concerned about oh, Spooky. Spooky. That's a nice pink ward flank, though. Spooky gets caught out, and yeah, that's going to be that the all. end of him. I don't know. I'm not sure why you'd use that all right there. Um, Dragon getting done, but it is a 4v5 right now. They do have Lilac split pushing up in the top lane, but they're going to have to give this one up. That was actually nicely done by Spenu. To try oh, close. Very close. Very close. That was a nice attempt, actually, by uh, by Spooky to get the flank, but Spenu set up. Look at those pink wards just everywhere. They know what that major threat is right now. They are hyper aware that if the Eve Shen old combination lands, that they are probably just going to straight up lose the game. Yeah, pretty much. So good preparation, making sure that they have the necessary information. Smart of them to go ahead and turn onto Spooky as soon as they see him. Still, they, still the trade works though. I am had a nice big wave developed already in the top side, and that global pressure will earn them a tier two. So it's not the end of the world. It was only the first. Dragon for Spenu. It does seem like that tier two in top right now is a little bit more valuable than the dragon for LZIM. And it depends on how much Lilac can continue to split push, right? If he yeah. can actually start to reliably get damage down onto the inhibitor turret, it will become quite useful. But I am. They have to start setting up some plays here. Spooky needs to get in there. They need to actually get some kills. They need to start using the Shen ult more often, or at least making attempts to. Especially while the TP is down. You got nothing to lose right now. Very true. You see the Maokai on the map. You should immediately start thinking about how you're going to make plays here as Spen is playing very risky at the moment. Now, they don't know where the Maokai is but he's probably not there. Here we go, they're doing it. Yep, they're gonna give it a try. Shen out coming in, and they don't manage to really connect with anybody. And they use the Agony's Embrace right there, but with Saucin right next to Nuclear, Nuclear was able to flash out and had enough shield and speed. So they got a flash yeah. for the ultimate, which is definitely a good trade, especially as Lilac is already level 18 in this game. He's two levels up over Soul, so wow. max rank in that ultimate means that cooldown's going to be up pretty darn often. Yep. As is Evelyn's. We can try it again before too long, but the fact that Nuclear was able to get out of that so easily with a little bit of help from Sasan is, is a bit worrisome for IM because that Juggermaw is about ready to get rolling. Yeah, but now no more Flash. So you're going to have to contend with that. That makes the positioning much more difficult, and that Raptor will be stolen away by Frozen. So I like the fact that they're at least trying to make the plays now, though. That is critical. And they also have gotten the wards into their favor. Good poke. Yep, they, they don't get the ult out of Roar, though, which is nice. Roar actually not going to be doing too much damage yet because he's been delayed on his last Whisper, and there is, of course, the Frozen Heart on the enemy team. He went for the Bloodthirster just because he wants to have a little bit more durability when it comes to getting poked himself and make sure that those team fights can't immediately be turned around by the fact that Nuclear gets some poke and he has to recall. And just checking the Baron, making sure that things are not being taken by Spenu, which they are not. And Shen still not really able to be handled by this Maokai. Big item advantage so far for Lilac. Big CS advantage too. Well, Sasson just charging down the mid lane. They know they've got I am a little bit split up perhaps. Or just trying to put some pressure on while they can anyway. Oh man, they're, they're so ripe for the picking again. Look at them pushing up right now. Sure they have the TP, but that flank. A lot of wards. I mean, if Spooky's just on the wrong side, if he was on the right side, if he was in the bottom side jungle right now with those pink wards, he would have an absolutely free flank into that back line. Yeah, as is, it's not gonna happen. Spinu 
Backing off anyway, though. They've got a big lane in top two, or big wave in top to worry about pretty soon. Oh, that was such a good opportunity. Hmm. That couldn't be taken. Spooky not actually that tanky quite yet. Just that locket of the Iron Solari so far, which is very critical against Spenu. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and Roar is still almost 100 CS up over Nuclear. It's pretty not, amazing. Not too 89. far ahead in items, though, thanks to all of the kills that Nuclear was able to pick up. That really right. has kept Spenu in this game, thanks to Secret, mostly. Yeah, very true. So I guess we're just going to wait for the next Dragon, Doa. Pretty much one minute away. And this has been a pretty passive game overall. Especially compared Sadly. to the last one. Well, I am just isn't willing to commit. They they have had multiple opportunities for some pretty nice engages. They don't look terribly coordinated, you know? Oh, two shot barrage. Wow, there we go. There's some damage onto Sasson. It's gonna immediately recall. Still plenty of time to do that and get back before Dragon, but that true shot barrage is going to be up well before Dragon as well. Yep, no problem there. So, but you notice that Spenu still can't really push out on the map. Yeah. Uh, they're having some issues right now. If they do, they run the risk of putting themselves in a very exposed situation. Well, Lilac has uh, Thorn Mail as well now, so Nuclear may be in a bit of trouble if that Shen gets onto the back lines. Yeah, they, they have to be able to properly set it up, and that's not something that they've been able to do yet. We have yet to see that combo actually work. Spenu did a good job of pink warding against it at the last Dragon. And then uh, after that, they blew a flash, but the flash nearly back up. Won't be back up for the start of this fight, which may be a big game changer for them. CJ has shown us how this combo is supposed to work, and when it goes off, it is really impressive. But so far, I am just hasn't been quite coordinated enough yet. And will we see some action around this dragon? I think it's pretty inevitable at this point, but I am has position for the moment. Yeah, they're already there, and the pink wards aren't yeah. at the same locations as they were in the last time. They're going to start Spooky it. Spooky is here on the side. Yeah, the hook does not hit. Soul comes in with the arcane smash as well. Spooky coming from the side. That's right. There's the agony and brace. They're going to come in. Dragon taken by IM already, and Roar doing tons of damage with Frozen from the outside. Spinning slowly being picked apart. Still alive for now, though. Lilac. Trying to do what he can. Spooky very, very low. Ignar low as well. I am. And they fought basically to a standstill. But here's where Frozen can clean up. Could be very, very bad. There's a kill for Roar coming in. Frozen tries to pick one up. Oh, he gets one. He gets a double. Triple. And he could get more. Oh. There's a triple kill. Did he get it? No, no he didn't get the triple. Roar got one of those. There's oh, a triple kill. There it is. That's right. True shot barrage. Coming up soon, but not soon enough to take down Soul, and that is exactly what I am was waiting for. And after that fight, with getting that dragon, things can be smooth sailing now. Still a little bit sloppy. So what actually oh, happened yeah. there was Spooky engaged, but he flashed back out before the Shen channel completed. So they didn't get the perfect opportunity to set up a chain CC on the back line. So really hold it for as long as he could have. However, everybody on Spenu got so low. Now watch, watch this. Watch Spooky come in. And he flashes out. And then Oops. Lilac doesn't end up next to Nuclear, and he has to flash Taunt to get onto Nuclear right there. So Spooky, eh, maybe not playing that as well as he could, but it doesn't matter. Everybody gets so low, they're in a choke, taking a lot of that Rune Glaive damage. And Roar just untouched in this engagement. And there's the flash forward. They don't quite land the Winter's Bite, but Frozen gets enough to turn this one around, and they're able just to charge right through the tower and get that final arcane shift cue for the kill. Yep. And they got the Baron on the way out as well, too. So I am in prime position now yeah. to Inhibitor, this one off. they have the wave in the mid lane. Inhibitor straight into the Baron. They are looking mighty fine. Oh, yeah. And now Spenu with a Siege composition that can't Siege. Yeah, the, things are are definitely looking rough for them. They also can be dove very easily mm -hmm. with this Evelyn constantly threatening to come around the backside of a Tier 2 tower. Oh, wow. That does a lot of damage. 
brutal. And the yeah. Zonia's Hourglass isn't even finished yet. It's pretty amazing. There goes the tier two. And I am just kind of bulldoze their way into the base now. Yeah, the poke is really serious. Secret not quite connecting with that death sentence there. Turret nearly down Nuclear's back. He's going to try to do some damage. Gets a good amount onto Nuclear, or onto uh, Ignar, rather. Yeah, but he's going to have to return every so often just based on the poke. And they have the Shen in the mid lane, too, and they're just going to zone him off the tower. Very nicely done by IM. Go yep. ahead and crush this inhibitor. You have a wave in the top side, too, so play this by the book. I mean, Spenu has to engage now. Uh, they're not going to. It's pretty much their last chance right there because they're not going to get another option like that again. Yeah, they have to go for something desperate here. Secret just cannot seem to land those death sentences. And there goes the final inhibitor turret. Teleport used to get Lilac back into the fray. And this is the moment they grab Ignar, not the best target. Soul a little bit wrapped up. Lilac trying to get the back lines for a taunt. And here we go. Spenu just forced back yet again. The poke. Frozen with another kill. Now going after Sassen. There's a double kill for him as well. Nuclear in a bit of trouble. Backing away. And I am fairly low by this turret. There's Roar with another one. That should be about it. By Nuclear. There goes the Nexus turrets. There goes the Nexus. And I am cleans it up. And that is a 2-0 for Incredible Miracle. Spenu, yet another match loss for them. Yeah, really tough, but they didn't have the answers for the Runeglaive Ezreal. They didn't play around it properly as a team. And it's a big smile on Frozen's face as he's able to take the first game's MVP and do quite well in the second game, too. Took him a while yeah. to get rolling that time. It wasn't that nice first blood that he got in game number one, but tough loss for Spenu, and that is probably it. That was more than likely. I mean, I said this with SKT as well, <laughs> that well, who's going to beat him now? Turns out it was CJ, but with Anarchy and IM no longer on the table for Spenu, they are staring a winless season square in the face. Yep.